are joining us now. Emma Dell's Aaron, Danny Miller. <laughs> I mean, just watching back all those clips is emotional enough. I know that um, viewers have found the entire journey really emotional. But it's, what has it been like for you um, and the cast to, to film this storyline? Yeah, I mean, I think whenever we get these big storylines, such as this, this sort of Bracca Jean storyline, uh, I think we find uh, an entitlement uh, to, to tell the story correctly and, and educate people in, a, in our own way, but also to keep sort of facts in there that are sort of hidden gems, but mm. also to, to kind of just make, make it work for us and, 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 and be truthful to it. Because yeah. obviously this is an everyday thing that's happening for people and, and our job is to kind of promote it and, yeah. and, and do it in our own way. So obviously Aaron, um, the final scene in that, Aaron realises that he's tested positive for the Baraka gene. Obviously, yeah. Did you, um, were you aware of the fact that men could get it? No, I have to be honest, I, I was very, very naive and uneducated about it, which was great for us because we got to learn about it that, you know, this BRCA gene can kind of be passed on, obviously, with it being a gene, and, um, you know, that it's it's obviously cancerous of, of the breast for a male, I didn't realise could happen. Um, and then, obviously, pancreatic as well and, and uh, prostate. So, uh, finding out that you're positive can only kind of be a good thing because it mm. sort of gives you the opportunity to go for regular screenings and mm. regular sort of checkups with the doctors and, and uh, they can sort of talk you through, even counsel you through it. So, yeah. it's, it's amazing for us as the cast, but acting-wise, it's, it's, it's great to be able to shed a bit of light on it. And, I, and, I, and it's been quite an education for you as well, because we were talking about earlier, because you haven't... Cancer hasn't touched your family, it has, has it? And we were talking earlier, and you were really surprised by that. Yeah, right? I was, because it's one in four people now, yeah. I think, that are affected by it. No, I think we're just, we're just kind of one of those lucky lucky families. I know a lot of people that have been, been touched by it. Um, and, uh, you know, a friend of mine who was a producer of Emmerdale, he, he died very quickly from it. So I've had an effect outside of the family as such, but... Um, you know, I think anybody that, you know, is friends or, or family members of someone who's suffered with it knows how, how yeah. of a daunting, horrible time it can be. I think the way that you guys have been covering it has been incredible. We'll take a look now um, at what's coming up tonight on the show. Fancy a game? No. You always were the best winker. Tiddlywinks was your thing. <sighs> I'll just chuck it off. No. No, I won't. Right, I know what you're doing now. You know, don't you? Yeah, I know. Oh, no, I know, um, Brett B, you're a huge fan oh, massive of the fan. show. <laughs> and you're a big fan of Aaron, aren't I you? I am a big fan <laughs> of, of, of you. I think, well, Danny, Aaron. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I have to say, you know, you never seem to catch a break. I feel sorry for you, cos yeah. you're like... I've I've watched your story and you're you're a big softy really at heart. <laughs> yeah. But you're very protective over your family and your mum and yeah. and all the dramas that's gone on with that. I want to know two things. How do you make yourself happy? What do you do? We've been speaking about that earlier because yeah. everybody thinks you're probably miserable, but you're not. No, I'm actually all right. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not. But also, is Rob Ron going to happen? Wow, two big questions. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I think, you know, I was saying before, I think family for me has, has changed my life and uh, that, that's a reason to go home and to forget your worries regardless and mm. kind of put your focus on there. Um, so that's kind of a way that I switch off from it and I keep myself happy-ish. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Rob Ron thing. I mean, look, you know, for me as an actor, I mean, financially more than anything, I'll be honest. But <laughs> Ryan coming back as Robert would be great. But mm. um, you know, I know I know he's he's got a young family himself, and he's he's off doing bits and bobs himself. So maybe one day we'll be able to tempt him back. But uh, not not anything imminent, shall we say? Okay. So what do you do to sort of debrief as an actor myself? You yeah. know, those storylines when you're on a run because mm. people see it in the way that they do, but they're not seeing how long you're actually shooting each episode, and that can be like weeks of doing that kind of oppressive storyline. How, yeah. how do you manage that with your mental health? I know you mentioned your family yeah. of sorts, but how do you sort of manage that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, we've, we've started this kind of, this, this podcast type thing of Albert's Bookshelf, which is, okay. uh, which is a huge sort of platform for kids to have access to free books wherever they get the podcast and stuff. So for us, that's a way of putting it into it. My son absolutely loves listening to stories and it might be the way that I tell them, I don't know. But, <laughs> um, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be able to sort of have another sort of project on the sidelines, keep yourself busy, because I think mm -hmm. actors in particular, and even in, in soaps now that are kind of few and far between storylines and yeah. busy schedules, you know, keeping yourself sort of focused on stuff is, is important. So, you know, that's, that's what we do. And it kind of then means we can listen to the stories after they've been sort of produced and stuff together as a family and, and he tends to sort of recite them back to us which is amazing for two and a half so yeah that's kind of my way of Good. switching off. <laughs>
Um, yeah. And the last time you were on the show, your wife was here with you she was. and the baby was crying, so she spontaneously yeah. breastfed the baby. Yeah. It caused a few headlines, didn't it, as well? It did, but, you know, I think very all Most extremely thing positive. In the world. Yeah, yeah, it is. It? Yeah, and we were such advocates for it. Um, you know, it's breastfeeding cute. is incredible. It's the most natural thing other than birth, I think. So, you know, for us, we were always very important. It just happened. It wasn't planned. It wasn't something we wanted to do. Mm. They were coming on the show at the end anyway to sort of show them off. And then uh, we could hear her crying backstage and Steph's kind of instincts as a mother kicked in and she's such an incredible mum. I know every, you know, father, husband might say that about there, but she really is kind of one in a million and, and she just sort oh. of nips off, grabbed him and oh. breastfed. So, yeah. so it wasn't a planned moment or anything, but were you surprised by the huge reaction and love that you guys got as a result? I think, yeah, I think we were, but I think it's just because we see it as such a normal thing. You know, a lot of people complain about it and saying, why would you do that, go somewhere else? I think the, the issue lies with that person. Maybe exactly. you should go somewhere else whilst my, my wife feeds my child. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Now, we were talking earlier um, about holidays with mates, and we're trying to encourage Brenda to go on another... I'll go on a dingle go holiday. <laughs> Be be <laughs> I bet you would be. Um, <laughs> but you, do you understand the joy of going on holiday with your mates? Yeah, I think, you know, it's nice, as, as, as great, especially when you have a family, you know, it's nice to be able to be, do that as part of that, but to go off and just sort of sort of be a, a form of version of yourself before you, you were calmed yeah. down by your wife and stuff is fantastic for a lad <laughs> to go on a lad's holiday. So, yeah, I had my stag do a couple of years ago, which was the best, best lad's holiday that I've had. <laughs> You love a stag, do you? You just been at Adam Thomas's stag. Well, that was well, a few years ago. Yeah, they asked me about that. That was a beef, and uh, that will stay there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also well done. Also <laughs> well done. Thank you. Um, you know, in terms of the, the the happiness stuff that we've been talking about, I know you said you're doing the podcast and and yeah. and what have you. Mm. But do you? I mean, it's interesting because you expect you to be very different to how Aaron is on the show. Yeah. And then you kind of walk in and you are such a, a bright person. Oh, thank you. And, and I just think you're someone that radiates a lot of joy. Oh, wow. Is that done... Do you think that's done on purpose, to, to keep yourself happy? Um, I think, you know, there's a bit of... There's a bit there. I wouldn't want to come and sit here and just answer yes or no and say, yeah, it's great, I love my <laughs> it job. It happens, then. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but there's part of me that, you know, wants to sort of portray the best version of myself, and I think this is the best version of myself, and yeah. I like people to see that, because especially when you watch so many sort of dark stories with Aaron and, yeah. and Emmerdale's Aaron, I, I guess it's... People do perceive you in that way, because if you don't do TV shows like this, a lot of people only see you on that, and yeah. Yeah. that's the perception of you, so yeah. it's nice to come and sort of say, I'm not that bad, I'm not that miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think that that joy and happiness has become even deeper than when you became a father? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's life-changing. It really is, and everybody said it to me, and I was like, all right, yeah, I get it, but you, you have one and then two comes along and suddenly you go, it's stressful, there's, there's no doubt about it, but, you know, in particular for me, it was always something that I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, I think it's just finding that right person who kind of wanted that as well and all the kind of struggles we went through it to have these two beautiful children at the end of it and hopefully some more in the future. Who knows that, you know, it's it's always... Uh, yeah, that's, that's... She told me to say that. More in the future? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you heard that, Steph. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for <laughs> coming for in. Me. There thank we you. go. Thank you. Thank you.